before becoming a frugal fanatic a few years ago, I would consider myself an average shopper. And if you're familiar with the USDA cost of food at home plans, I would put myself solidly in the moderate category. However, <laughs> now I am routinely spending 35% less than even the thriftiest, the lowest cost food plans, which if I do the math is a savings of $600 a month on groceries. Had I not learned all of these tips, that's what we would have been spending. And I am here to tell you that no matter what your state in life is, no matter what excuse you've given for why your grocery budget is just as much as your mortgage, I can help you save money too. So today I have six customized plans based on your core value or circumstance. People who have zero time, people who don't have access to a bunch of stores, people on specialty diets, people with low mobility, and finally the people who are just so broke. They need to save every penny they can. I've got a lot of tips for them. <laughs> All right, so first category, people who have zero extra time. They're super busy with their two full-time jobs or their 12 children, whatever. <laughs> So one, really lean on your instant pots, your rice cookers, your slow cookers, anything that's like an unsupervised small appliance, <laughs> things you can just dump things in, leave. Because one, that's gonna save you time, obviously, but two, it's also gonna save you energy costs because the cost to run one of these smaller appliances is way less than the cost to run your stove or your oven. You'll also wanna do a lot of grocery pickup because not only are you not spending the time wandering around each of the aisles, which you should never do, by the way, don't just go down, up and down every single one, absolutely not. That is a recipe for putting way more in your cart than you need. There's no impulse shopping as you're wandering the aisles, especially if you're stressed from a long week of work or tired and you're just super weak to that like pack of Oreos, which I don't know how they have gotten to be $5 a pack. When did that happen? <laughs> Stores are engineered so minutely to get you to spend as much as possible. So if you can stay out of the stores, it's gonna be much better for your budget, except you do need to watch out for when you're doing, you're about to hit checkout when you're online, you're probably gonna get some kind of pop-up or sent to a separate page that's like, did you forget anything? And it shows all of your favorite things that you bought last week that aren't in your cart this week and the grocery store is just saying, hey, maybe you should buy some more things and give us some more of your money. <laughs> Watch out, watch out for the things you might have forgotten, Paige. Just ignore them, just move away. If you have multiple grocery stores near you, but you don't have time to be one of those people who goes into all the different stores to pick up all the sales, that's okay. I don't do that either, <laughs> one store a week. And I rotate which store I'm going to based on what I know that store has the best prices on. So when I'm at Aldi, I'm gonna be getting my milk, my cheese, my tofu, my bread, other things that I've learned are cheaper at Aldi. Next week, I'm going to my local grocery store, which is called Hannaford, and there I'm gonna be picking up the on-sale meat most of the time. Next week, maybe I'm going to Walmart, and I know Walmart has the best prices on eggs and comparable prices on most other things. So I rotate where I'm shopping to make sure I'm getting full advantage of that store's specialties without wasting time going to 14 stores a week. Sometimes when you're super busy and tired, it's easy to fall into that, like, I deserve this mentality, like, yeah, this week sucked, like it's okay, I'm gonna get the fancy peanut butter because you're exhausted. <laughs> so instead, wait and do your meal planning and like your online grocery pickup creation or when you're as freshly rested and as low stress as possible. If you've already filled your self-care cup in other ways, like sleeping and showering, <laughs> you're less likely to feel like you need to fill that self-care cup with food shopping. <laughs> I mentioned Aldi. If you have an Aldi near you and you've never tried it, you should. And specifically because it's going to save you time in addition to money. Like it's going to save you money. You've heard that before. But their stores are smaller than any other grocery store you've been to. So you can't spend an hour wandering around everything. They also have fewer options for each product. So they don't have 15 different kinds of mustard. They've maybe got like two, a Dijon and a normal. And it's not going to take as long to decide on the things you're going to buy because there's just so many fewer options. Really need to stay out of the aisle of shame. <laughs> That's the budget buster. And I should mention here, if you're short on time and you're currently like eating out for most of your meals or door dashing a bunch, give yourself some grace. <laughs> You are not going to go from that phase of life to baking all of your own bread. Like, give yourself some grace as you ease into money-saving tricks. Cold turkey is hard. <laughs> It'll be way cheaper for you to just buy the pre-packaged meals in the freezer section now and work your way up to making your own bread later if you want. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You should try it. And just so you can get a sense for how much you're saving, I think everyone should track exactly how much they spend on takeout food. And then I know that for some people, this is like a source of embarrassment or shame or like, I don't even wanna look at that number. I am afraid of how high it is, but you can look it in the eye because that's the only way you're going to know how much you've grown is if you know what the rock bottom was. For some people, myself included, the cook once, eat 
twice method is a really big game changer and that can either mean you make enough food so you have leftovers for a day or two or it can mean you make two or more portions of the food you're making and you freeze one or more in the freezer and then you could have that another day as like a freezer meal. And I know some people are worried about like losing quality family time, but let me tell you, you can make it a family affair and you can spend that time preparing together and dancing around in the kitchen. I mean, in my house, it's mostly the dancing. The toddlers are getting covered with flour, but it's a process. <laughs> All right, 10, reevaluate what you consider to be a luxury item. This, this was a bonus one. My husband just mentioned it casually before I started filming it. So you busy people get a bonus tip. Really look at what you buy on a weekly basis and reevaluate what you consider to be a luxury. So before I became frugal, when I was just a normal average spender, I was buying goat cheese and artisan bread at the grocery store every single week. And it wasn't a luxury to me, it was just normal what I always did. Now I've really moved goat cheese into like the splurge category. So I'll get it once or twice a year when I see it on sale at Aldi. It has been super useful for us to evaluate what is in our splurge and our average grocery mental buckets. So try evaluating what's in your normal and your splurge buckets and maybe do some shifting or substituting. Finally, don't be afraid to be repetitive. The old standbys of like tacos, pasta night, pizza night. They're not flashy, they're not sexy, but they use basic affordable ingredients and they can be pretty customizable. So you can have soup night every week, but your soups from one week to the next look pretty different. And so you don't get bored. All right, next, people who don't have access to a lot of stores near them. This one actually came up in my annual subscriber survey. Someone said, well, what if you only are stuck with a Walmart? Or what if the only thing you have is the expensive grocery store? There are ways for you to save too. So if you've only got expensive stores, you, my friend, have the secret weapon of sales. The expensive stores are the ones who run the best sales because they know, people know, that they're the expensive store. So they purposefully have the best rock bottom sales. These are called loss leader sales. They sell items at a loss to themselves to lead you into the store to buy things because they're hoping that when you come in for the one really good deal on ham, you're also going to stock up on toilet paper and battles and whatever you're going to buy. So I promise you, if you can stick to only buying the on sale produce and meats and not buying any of the other produce and meats, you are going to save a ton of money. And I'll talk more about loss leader and markdown sales in the final section, but I wanted to give you a little taste here. And this will probably mean buying in bulk when you see a good deal because you want it to last until the next time you see that same good deal on that product. So in my area, we usually have six week rotations on most sales. So recently I went in my freezer and I was out of ground beef and I thought, oh man, I really could use a good taco, but I didn't have any ground beef. But I knew that if I just waited one or two weeks, I'd be hitting the next sales cycle when ground beef goes on sale. So I did it, I waited and what do you know? It was 4.59 that week I wanted tacos. I waited a week and a half and it went down to $2.79 at the expensive grocery store near me. So huzzah. Sometimes you just have to wait and buy six weeks worth of taco meat before you go make tacos when they're expensive. Keep a well-stocked pantry or like tote under your bed, closet under the stairs, wherever space you got, just shove food in it that you bought when it was at the lowest price at your local expensive grocery store. There are things that don't go on sale at the expensive grocery stores and that's probably what you're bummed about. You're like, yeah, okay, I can get a really good deal on taco meat, but how am I supposed to afford my life when I have to buy a box of pasta that's $2 for one pound? And yeah, there's ways around that too. Have you checked the prices on Amazon generic food recently? Cause they have pretty comparable prices on their uh, generic products. Here's Walmart's price for pasta sauce and here is Amazon's price for generic pasta sauce. I mean it's only a two cents per ounce difference. It's not that bad. Or if you don't want to do Amazon the least you can do is get the generic brand at your expensive grocery store. It's still going to be miles cheaper than buying like Prince pasta versus generic pasta. Here's another trick. I have a family member who is an hour away from her local bulk club food store and she doesn't regularly get down there because it's an hour away and she's busy but because she has a membership that has free shipping to her door, she can buy everything in bulk even though they're far away and have it delivered to her house. All right, now let's say you've got the opposite problem. You don't have the fancy expensive grocery store where you can get good deals, you're stuck with the Walmart. Yes, if you only have a Walmart, that probably means you are going to be eating a lot of the cheaper versions of the most expensive categories of foods. So when it comes to meat, you wanna be focusing on the cheapest cuts of meat. So like chicken quarters, I can find like 10 pound bags for quite affordable at Walmart of like chicken quarters, which is like a ham hock, and the wings <laughs> or ground beef. It's going to be more expensive than the fancy deals you get at the expensive stores, but it's the best option you've got at Walmart. You can also use less meat in meals and bulk up more on things like peanut butter, tofu, beans to be nutritionally balanced, but not as expensive per serving of protein. Alternatively, depending on what part of the country you live in, apparently buying an entire cow or half a cow or a quarter of a cow is actually 
more economical than buying the meat in Walmart. I haven't really found that to be the case where I live when I've done the math, but people out west in the western United States have seen their budgets and it seems to be a fantastic deal. So it's worth checking out, like googling like buy a whole cow near me, <laughs> finding, out, finding out what some local prices might be. And if you've ever tried this, I'd love to hear your experiences because I, I think the idea is really cool. And finally, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere with very few options to buy food at the prices you want to pay, you also can try getting a bunch of family or friends together and having carpool to the big city and go bulk buy groceries day. And then actually you might be able to buy things in an even bigger bulk than you and your family could handle and then parse it out among all the friends who went on the shopping trip and, and have a food parsing party. <laughs> Maybe my idea of fun is a little different than other people's. All right, third category of people are the people who have specialized food needs. So like people on a keto diet or a vegan diet or a Mediterranean diet or a low carb diet, carnivore diet, you know, whatever diets bemoan how much their diet makes their grocery bill go up. These are the people I'm talking to and actually there are tips for you too. First, ignore all of the copycat foods. <laughs> we all know that box of like gluten-free vegan mac and cheese. We know it's a poor copy of the real thing and probably triple the price. The same is gonna go for like impossible burgers and keto waffles, dairy-free ice cream. I mean, mostly it's, it's a lot of the convenience foods that they've dietified. <laughs> then they can then sell for a premium. This stuff will kill your budget even faster than normal junk food will kill a grocery budget. So look at this, keto labeled granola bars at $23 a pound versus normal generic granola bars for $6.50 a pound, which is like a 70% savings just because one had the keto label and some different ingredients. Instead, try using the whole food version of whatever you can have in your diet. So like rice and beans, grilled chicken, Banana, oh God, please tell me there's not some new fad diet where you can't eat bananas. <laughs> and this might mean that you don't have as wide a variety of foods that you eat. However, maybe this means you get really good at making your own dressings and sauces and rubs and all kinds of other things to add to the flavor profiles, even if you don't have a variety in the base ingredients that you eat from week to week. I know this is what we do in our house a lot. My husband eats a whole food plate-based diet and we have a lot of different flavorings going on. I mean, have you seen my spice rack? <laughs> All right, another one I hear from a lot is people who have like low mobility for one reason or another. When I've been super duper pregnant, I have this issue. So if you can't stand for long periods of time, like if standing at the stove for a while is too much for you, here's a great meal formula. Rotisserie chicken, that's like comes pre-cooked, microwavable bag of vegetables, and, and then like a microwave baked potato, done. <laughs> Complete nutrition, balanced, yum. And now there's no dirty pots or pans that you have to again stand at your sink and clean. Win-win. In fact, frozen and canned foods in general can be really good if this is your issue because it means fewer trips to the grocery store and f less time on your feet as you go through the grocery store and have to bring things back to the house. Longer shelf life equals fewer shopping trips. Car side pickup is also gonna be a huge win for people in this category because it's gonna save you money and save you time and strain on your body. <laughs> Alternatively, you can try getting a subscription to something like Walmart Plus or something that's going to have the groceries delivered to your front door and then you don't have to leave your house at all. Plus, I don't know if you knew this, but if you're on low income and qualify for an EBT, that gets you 50% off a Walmart Plus subscription, um, which is really cool. <laughs> Finally, and this is really cool, some communities offer what's called like a grocery volunteer helper program. So it's where people will literally help you do the grocery shopping, help you bring it into the house, get it set up in your kitchen, especially if the lugging of bags is really tricky for you. So just Google like grocery helper volunteers near me. All right, last but not least, my favorite, if you just need to squeeze every single penny and get as much value from each penny as you can, here are the tips for you. Number one is going to be make a price book. I've covered this in a separate video if you need a breakdown of exactly how it works, but it's just a way to compare food prices in your area. You're never going to know if a, a sale is a really good sale or a marketing gimmick, unless you have some historical data to show oh, that's the same price it was last week and they're calling it a 50% off discount. Fake news. <laughs> Spend time preserving your food, freezing, canning, dehydrating, freeze drying. They can all be very effective ways to save. But if you really, really, really need to slash your budget, the two best tips, and there's like sub tips in each of these tips, but the two most important things you can do are to one, only buy things when they are on super duper sale, and two, make a reverse meal plan based on your stockpile of food at home. So let's talk about sales first, as there are two main kinds. One I already alluded to earlier, which is a loss leader sale. So this is my local expensive grocery store. It's called Shaw's, it's an Albertsons subsidiary. You've also got Kroger, Meyer, 
Publix. All of these that have lost leader sales will produce one of these little nice flyers. They obviously have quite a few sales. Not all of these are the super sales you wanna focus on. Not all of these are the lost leader sales. Those ones are going to be right in this section, maybe all the way down to this section of the flyer. Even though usually down here, even these sales are not super duper sales that they, they run those pretty frequently. But these ones, this was 97 cents for spiral ham. You can better believe I stocked up on ham that week. These ones are the loss leaders. They're selling them at a loss to lead you into the store. This section of the flyer is really where you want to focus. Even Aldi does some of these to a degree. You're not even going to see them at places like Walmart or Dollar Tree or anything that has like everyday low prices. You're not going to find loss leaders at those stores at all. And the best loss leaders, as you can see, come around the holidays. This was a couple weeks ago. It says Merry Christmas and Happy Kwanzaa at the top. Holidays are the best time to stock up on lost leaders, especially meats, but also sometimes fruits and vegetables. So at Thanksgiving, you're going to see turkeys going for way cheaper. In my area, I'll see them for 47 cents a pound when they're usually $2 a pound, which is like 75% off. You can't find anywhere 75% off food, except for lost leader sales on the holidays. You'll also see like corned beef going on sale around St. Patrick's Day if you live in an area with a lot of Irish people like I do, hams and rib roasts around Christmas, uh, ground beef and chicken for grilling around grilling holidays like 4th of July or Memorial Day in America. I'd be really interested to know what kind of foods go on lost leader sales in your area because I know it's based on the people who live there so I'd be curious to know if there are anything like that in all the places you guys live. So obviously in order to truly save, you need to stock up. I can't just buy one of these super cheap hams because that's not gonna last me until the next time hams go on sale that cheaply. Really hams are going on sale that cheaply once a year and it's Christmas. So I get as much as I can. Unfortunately, some of these have like limit twos, which are kind of sucky, but you do what you can. For meats, you're gonna wanna make sure you have room in your freezer or get a chest freezer like we have. If you say, oh, I don't have enough places to store the food I bought super duper cheaply, it's time to get creative. Like in my house, I've got Onions hanging out with the muffin tins. Potatoes hanging out with the bread tins. Notice the potatoes and the onions are two separate drawers. Took me a stupid long time to learn that they shouldn't be next to each other, but they both will last so much longer if because they're not friends. I don't know why, I'm not a scientist, but keep your potatoes and your onions separate. On top of things, under things, hanging from random places, like there are so many places in your house where you can squirrel away some food, kind of like a real squirrel. They don't only have to be stored in places where you do your food preparation. You could put food under the bed and cans if you want. Also, if you're trying to find the super duperest sales, you're gonna wanna make sure you check all the grocery stores in your area at least once. You don't have to check five stores a week. All the stores that are near you within reason or that you're gonna have to pass on your way home from work anyway, if you have the discipline to walk into that store, check the places where you know the loss leader or markdown sales are going to be, and then not buy anything else if you don't see any good sales, you are going to eventually find tons of good stuff and only have wasted a couple minutes out of your week if you don't. And when I say check all the stores, I mean all the stores. Like when was the last time you went to your local ethnic food store, like the halal market or the Asian market? They can have really good sales that no one ever knows about because they're not advertising in the places you expect to find advertisements. Which brings me to, you might also wanna check out, there is an app called Flip, which is free. It's a weekly flyer comparison app that just shows you all of the flyers for all of the stores in your area. And so you can see who has the best price on what thing in any given week. All right, the next kind of super sale that you really want to look out for is called a markdown sale. Some stores might call it a fire sale, but basically it's when there's food that's about to go out of code it's not expired, it's not bad yet. This is the store's way of clearing out food to make room for new inventory and to hopefully get some money back on food so they don't have to just throw it away and take it as a total wash. Again, some stores do these kind of sales, some stores don't. I've got like two expensive grocery stores and only one of them does markdown sales, which I'm not a fan of. In fact, I have a video in one of my first How I Saved Money This Month series and I got the best markdown sale I've ever seen in my life. It was bacon that was supposed to be $10 a pound. I got it on a fire sale for $2 a pound, which is an 80% savings. Totally stocked up on bacon that time. Also, when it comes to markdown sales, you're gonna wanna chat up the employees and ask them what time of day or what day of the week they're most likely to be putting the markdown stickers on food. So you can know to be there and just casually show up exactly when all the markdown sales do. <laughs> <laughs> and this might be different from department to department. Like maybe the meat department is able to do everything the night before. So first thing in the morning, all of the markdown sales are there. But maybe the produce department, it takes them till like 9, 30, 10 o'clock because they've got to like rearrange all of the fresh produce. Check with all of the people in all of the departments and see what you can find out so that you can be 
on the inside. So the second half of this strategy to save as much as possible on food is obviously going to be planning your meals around what you already have. This is called reverse meal planning. So instead of thinking, hmm, I want to make Zupa Toscana soup for an Olive Garden copycat this week, and you write down the ingredients you'll need to buy to make that soup. No. First, instead of thinking of your cravings, you look at what you actually have in your house and say, oh, I've got this chicken that probably needs to get used up. I have to think of a meal that uses chicken. You also look at all the fruits and vegetables that you have that need to get used up first, and you make your meal plan based on what you have, because that's the food you already bought, so you don't need to buy that again to eat that week. So it keeps your grocery budget super low. Learning to meal plan does take some time, but honestly, once you get the hang of it, it goes so fast. Now, where I'm at with my skill set, after like a couple years, I don't take any more than one hour a week to plan my meals. It's gotten so fast. And if you want to get really fancy, my favorite kind of meal plan is what I call the cascading leftovers meal plan. <laughs> and what I mean by that is like you take one base meal like a roast dinner and you use the parts of that that are left over after the first meal you ate to make new meals and make new meals and make new meals. So one, you aren't wasting any amount of the food and two, you're not getting bored. <laughs> so if you have like roast chicken and you eat that with your potatoes and your carrots and whatever. Next night, you're probably gonna take some of that chicken and put it into a soup. Or maybe you're gonna take some of the chicken and turn it into um, mac and cheese casserole with chicken bits in it. You can also use any leftover carrots and blend them up and it's kind of got an orange color. It just looks like the cheese in your mac and cheese. And that's a good way to hide little veggies. You've got little ones like I do. <laughs> Tacos, casseroles, sandwiches, all of these are great second, third, fourth day meal ideas. If you've got a cascading leftover meal plan, it's a really good way to avoid food waste. How have I not mentioned food waste? Okay, that's the 50 second tip. <laughs> little food waste as possible. <laughs> Reverse meal planning does sometimes mean you have to get a little creative. Maybe you have ingredients that because they were so, so cheap, you bought them and you kind of have to learn how to use them. But if I promise you, if you buy things when they're on super duper sale and do reverse meal planning, these savings can be in Sane. Julie, who runs the wildly popular Facebook group, Everything Frugal, I just interviewed her and I'm gonna have a video with her coming out in about a month. She uses this exact strategy and spends less than $800 per year to feed her and her husband. So if you're watching this and have already published that interview, you can go to the link right here. But if you're watching this and you're part of like the super duper early club, well, first, thank you. And second, you can just go to this video, which I'll let the algorithm choose for you because you know, it kind of knows what it's doing. It's gonna give you something fancy. Bye YouTube.